a very strange gospel, isn't it? God is good all the time, right? You already know it! Fantastic! I first heard those words from a young pastor when I was in college, and he was a friend and a mentor to me as I was getting ready to go to seminary. I've heard preachers say it many times since then, and apparently so have you, encouraging audience participation, so let's do it. God is good all the time. But what about when everything goes wrong? What about those times when we try and try, when we do our very best, and yet we get knocked down over and over again? Is God good then? Is God even paying attention? When we find ourselves asking those kinds of questions, Joseph's story is a great place to turn. Joseph lived a life that, like most of us, was filled with ups and downs. Joseph's were very extreme ups and downs. He was loved, treasured, adored by his father. He was the favorite son. He was the one who got special gifts like that famous, amazing Technicolor dream coat. And... He was the one who was hated by his brothers, hated to the point where they threw him in a pit, and then they left him there while they tried to decide what to do with him and how to get rid of him. And they thought about killing him, but then an even better option came along. They sold him, and they sold him for 20 silver pieces, a nice profit. Once in Egypt, Joseph was sold again for an even higher price. And this time he was sold to Potiphar, who was a high-ranking official. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became successful, and he served. Potiphar treated Joseph not like a slave, but as a trusted partner. Potiphar put everything under Joseph's supervision and didn't pay attention to anything. In fact, all Potiphar ever had to worry about was what he wanted to eat for his next meal. Joseph was going places until one day he wasn't. Life as Joseph knew it came to a screeching halt when he was sexually assaulted and then blamed for it. Just like his brothers had thrown him into that pit, now Potiphar threw him into prison. Yet even there, the Lord was with Joseph and caused the jail's commander to think highly of him. And he put all the prisoners under Joseph's supervision. And Joseph was the one that determined everything that happened in the prison. And like Potiphar, the jailer paid no attention to anything because the Lord was with Joseph and made everything he did successful. Joseph's is a story of extreme hardship. Joseph's a victim of, one of some of the worst crimes that humans inflict on each other. Human trafficking, sexual assault, racism. And unfortunately, since Joseph's time, not much has changed in the world. There are between 20 and 30 million slaves in the world today. Nearly a million of them are tracked in and out across our borders every year. 80% are female. 50% are children. This is happening right now. It's happening in every single county in Wisconsin. Slavery is alive and well among us, even here, even now. And then there's sexual assault, and that's a little bit more difficult to give statistics on because of underreporting. But sex used as a weapon to control others and blame that gets turned around and directed against its victims, that continues to be a problem in our world today, just as it was in Joseph's time. And then there's racism. Potiphar's wife wanted to gain power and control. So when Joseph denied her, she assaulted him right there and then. And then, adding injury, insult to injury, she blamed him. 
And the same story plays out over and over again. So she tried to get all of the people in the household on her side by pointing the blame at this Hebrew, appealing to the Egyptians' racial prejudice against foreigners, and trying to turn the whole household against her husband. And don't we too seek out scapegoats? Don't we look for somebody to blame? We are tempted over and over again to find the divide between us and them. Meanwhile, where is God? These things are not new phenomena. The patterns are as old as humanity, and we repeat them over and over again. How can we interrupt this pattern? How can we break the cycle? We need to tell the stories, and we need to learn from them. So where is God in this? The Lord is with Joseph. The text tells us that four times. Many things were put under his supervision, first by Potiphar, then by the jailer. And Joseph was so trustworthy that his employers did not need to worry about anything he took charge of. They didn't pay attention to any of those things. Joseph stayed in prison for two years. And then one day, he was called upon to interpret a dream the Pharaoh had had. And with God's help, he impressed the Pharaoh. And before long, Joseph was second in command. And in fact, while Pharaoh was the figurehead, Joseph was effectively the ruler of all Egypt. And eventually a famine comes to their land, but Egypt has stored up food because of Joseph's wisdom and foresight. And so people come from all around to buy food, including Joseph's own brothers from the land of Canaan. And when they arrive, they don't recognize him right away, but eventually Joseph reveals himself, and they all reconcile. And Joseph brings the whole family to Egypt, and they all live there. And then 17 years later, Jacob, their father, dies. And the brothers, including Joseph, all take their families and Jacob's body back to Canaan for burial. And that's when J uh, Joseph's brothers start to worry. Even though Joseph said all those years ago that he had forgiven them for what they'd done, they are still worried because they're stuck in the regret and fear. What if Joseph hadn't really completely forgiven them? What if Joseph still focuses on that day that they attacked him and then sold him off? What if Joseph had been waiting as long as their father was alive, but now that he was gone, what if Joseph retaliated? What would he do to them? now that their father is gone. And then in Genesis 50, verse 20, we have one of the greatest expressions of faith that I know. Joseph responds to his brother's fears with these words. He says, you planned something evil for me, but God produced something good from it. Even in the face of Things like human trafficking and sex crimes and racism. We have a God who can nevertheless bring forth good. God used one life, Joseph's life, to save the lives of many so that the story could go on. And it does. The story does go on. God is good. And all the time. Amen.